Hello and welcome to the 10th video tutorial in this 10 part video tutorial series on creating an e-commerce site using Drupal and Ubercart. I am P.D. Orsi, the Toronto website developer specializing in Drupal and like all other video tutorials in this series, this is brought to you in collaboration between myself and the Ubercart.org team who thought it would be great to have a video tutorial series out there to help people get their e-commerce sites off the ground. So. Um, just before we finish up, uh, we're obviously going to be covering going live, we're going to be looking at some reports, uh, and then we'll check out taking your site to the next level. Um, just recently, Ubercart and I uh, started having some conversations and we've decided to move forward with a second video tutorial series in which we're probably going to look at things like theming, uh, theming your site, so we'll look at uh, less CSS, uh, we'll probably check out some Chrome developer tools. Uh, probably walk through a theme that I'm going to show you here that's specifically developed for Ubercart, but then we'll also be stepping into uh, the world of SSL. So you know how to um, secure your site if you're going to be going beyond PayPal. Uh, looking at other modules like the Feeds module to import mass products. Uh, if you have a thousand products, you obviously don't want to create those one at a time. Feeds module will help you out with that. So we'll probably have a dedicated video on that. Uh, we'll also be looking at some advanced views, uh, how to walk through the views module, obviously being the most uh, downloaded module, that's something pretty important. So um, that will be coming out uh, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, look forward to it, but um, until then, just a brief recap on the series. So obviously video one, we first configured our server, created the database for Drupal, created a database user, and then uploaded our site, got Drupal installed. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Second video tutorial, we looked at stepping back from our site just to talk about some common Drupal terminology. So that was like blocks, uh, themes, modules, nodes, just things you're gonna need to know when you're in the Drupal world. The third video tutorial, we started looking at uh, module functionality. So uh, going to drupal.org, uh, when you're looking at modules, what do you need to know? And then downloading those modules and getting them up onto our site. Uh, in the fourth video tutorial, we started configuring those modules. Uh, so that was everything but Ubercart. Uh, specifically looked at a lot of search engine optimization. So if you haven't watched that video tutorial, go back. You're gonna wanna make sure that you do that because you want Google to drive traffic to you. Uh, in the fifth video tutorial, we started looking at Ubercart itself uh, and configuring uh, some minor changes, uh, you know, store name, uh, your store email address, uh, address, that kind of thing. Um, and then we stepped into the real meat of everything uh, on video tutorial six, where we started looking at configuring shipping quotes, flat rates. Uh, we looked at PayPal, conditional taxes. Um, and then we, you know, we took that into a step further in video tutorial seven, where we started creating products. Uh, and you know, we had shippable products, we had purchase rolls, we had downloadable products, um, and looked at the the catalog that actually starts or rather comes with Drupal. In tutorial eight, we took a brief side step and we looked at the world of views, uh, and we overrode our taxonomy term pages with the views module, uh, and then started looking at how do we do that for our catalogs. Obviously, Views is pretty powerful, number one module downloaded, so a um, lot of powerful there, a lot, a lot of power there, um, and that's something that's actually being incorporated in Drupal 8, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so next major release of Drupal, you're going to have views in there, so good thing to know how to use. Um, and then in this last video tutorial, video tutorial 9, we looked at product kits, uh, store stocks, and order states, just have a little bit more fine grained control over our e-commerce site before we launched. And so that takes us to video tutorial 10 where we're actually gonna be launching, uh, something that's pretty exciting. So let's jump right into it. In terms of the, uh, doing that, the major things that we're gonna have to look at are our actual payment uh, methods. So we'll go over to configuration and we'll look at uh, the payment methods that we have set up for PayPal right now. So right now we have the PayPal website's payment standard. And this is the actual checkout where a customer is providing their information on your site. Now, if you don't have SSL set up, it might not be a good idea to do this because you're actually going to be taking personalized information on an unsecured page. So what I prefer to do uh, when I'm doing PayPal and we don't have an SSL certificate installed is just to have PayPal Express Checkout. And the way that you do that is to go to Configuration and you can go to Checkout. And here we have Enable Checkout. And so if we disable this, we can only use third parties like the PayPal Express checkout. So I tend to do that. Uh, this is a personal preference. However, um, you know, there are some concerns about collecting personal information on an unsecured page. Entirely up to you, but uh, this provides the option to do that. So now if we step back over to our payment methods, we can go and might as well just uncheck that. We'll save that configuration. And now we'll go into the settings for PayPal Express checkout. Now, if you remember, we were using the sandbox. So we'd want to change that to live. But at the same time, we want to make sure that our PayPal email address is updated. So mine, P 
Peter at Toronto website developer com and then my API credentials right so these are all my test site and so what you're going to do is log into your live account and it's going to look something like this and you're going to be in my account and you're going to want to go to profile and when you're in profile you're going to want to go to my selling tools and then here you're going to have API access so you're going to hit update and then this will typically say you know we're going to, we need to verify your account so once you do that uh, you're going to come here and you're going to actually choose to uh, request API credentials. And then it will actually provide you with your API information. And you'll take this and you'll copy it back to your site. So once you do that, you're going to have live server, you're going to have your uh, live API username, password, signature. And then here you're going to use the credit card submission form. This ensures that when users are checking out, they don't have to have a PayPal account. Um, and then these boxes here, these are actually what are going to show up after a user provides their payment. So they'll be brought to your site and you'll see these boxes. So we do have shipping options. So we want to be able to allow the user to check that. We don't want them to necessarily have a company name because not everybody's going to be associated with the company. We do want a contact phone number and we can allow them to enter some comment text. So we'll go ahead and we'll save the configuration there. Now I'm just going to put mine back to sandbox because I'm obviously still doing that. And so we're good. So the next thing that we've got to check out is our actual shipping quotes and make sure that our uh, UPS is configured to live. So we do that by obviously having um, our information here that we got from UPS when we were setting up our account. But we're actually going to put our server mode into production and then we would save our configuration and then that way uh, our link up with UPS is complete and we're, we're essentially live on payments and shipping. So that's that. Um, once you do that, your, your site is live, you're ready to go. What I personally like to do uh, once I've done that is actually test out an order. So I do that using Chrome. I usually hit Control Shift N and this will bring up an in private browsing screen. The reason why I do that is because I like to keep my logged in site in case I need to change something, but also be able to have the anonymous user browsing experience. So here I'll go back to uctorontowebsitedeveloper.com. And now it doesn't recognize me as being logged in. So once I do this, I go ahead and I'll add something to the cart. And actually, sorry, I, sh I should have mentioned before I do this, I usually change the product to $1. So I would come in here and go to Super Saver edit this product Oops. looking at the product kit there so super awesome product edit this and we'll make this one dollar and just want to make note that you know your what your original price is the reason why I do this is because oh, we need a product type of course The reason why I do this is because I always like to walk through actually ordering a product from an anonymous user point of view to make sure that we don't have any errors. So I'll actually go forward and pay PayPal, complete the order, do the full processing to make sure that I understand the user experience and that there are no hidden issues throughout there that I might not be aware of if I don't actually complete an order. And because it's only $1, PayPal is going to take their 33 cents from me but I'm going to have that peace of mind knowing that the site that I'm building either for myself or for a client is working properly. So I'll go ahead and add this to the cart. Obviously you want to do this before you actually launch the site or make it accessible to people because uh, you don't want them buying uh, products for $1 or do it in the middle of the night. So here I'm actually doing this through a test site. Just I'm going to walk you through just to see what it looks like, but you would obviously be doing this on a live site and checking out. Right, so we can go ahead and continue. And this is what I was referring to before when we configured kind of that checkout page where, you know, we've completed with PayPal, they bring us back here, here's our contact phone number that we're gonna enter. Great site. 
looking forward to seeing my products. Right, continue checkout. Finalize by submitting. There we go, so I can return to the front page. And now if I minimize this, I can go back, check out my store orders, and I can see here that I've got a dollar. Uh, I can go into my actual order settings, check out what's going on, and I can go and I can uh, finalize the payment uh, and we're good to go. So um, that's kind of walking through the order. Uh, I highly recommend you do that just to make sure that you know nothing is problematic. Obviously, I would go through, finalize the transaction, uh, notify the the, uh, the user, make sure that emails are working properly. Uh, but you can do all that. Um, so that's it. Once you do that, you're live. You're ready to go. Your site's online. So in the afternoon that it took you to watch this entire video tutorial series, you went from knowing nothing about Drupal and Ubercart to having your e-commerce site online. And that's kind of the power of using Ubercart and using Drupal uh, and leveraging the Drupal community. Last thing that I want to show you just quickly, um, actually, sorry, I lied. A couple things I'm going to show you, but last thing about Ubercart is the reports. Um, these are pretty nifty, pretty handy. You can actually check out here. Um, these are the different customers that have placed orders, right? So you can see that I've got one order. It's showing zero because uh, I just created it. We haven't actually finalized it and zero products because again, uh, not completed, right? Um, I'm not entirely sure why I'm seeing my name twice here. Obviously the customer is different, uh, but it's the same information. So if anyone's got any hints on that, leave a comment, let me know. Um, I just couldn't spend the time trying to figure it out. Um, in terms of some of the other powerful reports that you got. You got your product report. This is nice when you start really selling on Ubercart because you can see how your products are doing, what's the highest selling um, as opposed to you know the worst selling. Um, but it also breaks it down by your specific uh, SKUs. So remember we had Pete CD that was gray and we had it as yellow, uh, broken down here to see you know if we want to compare different colors, um, what's most effective possible to do that. You also have the ability to customize these reports so I can look at specific dates. Uh, as well, if I don't want to look at comment, I want to see what's pending, or you know, maybe there's something um, uh, people are abandoning checkout. You can start to see maybe it's certain products. Why is that? And start nailing some things down. Um, so from there, we've got the sales report. Obviously, an important report where you can actually check out your dollars, uh, you know, over the years, and again, where our order status is at, so we can check out how many are abandoned, right? So obviously, we have an issue going on here start looking at that process. What are people not understanding? Why are they leaving? Got to be something there so we can really nail that down. And again, you have the opportunity here to customize these reports and look at things specifically for what your needs are, um, you know, specific month, specific year, and the order statuses, right? Um, probably not earth shattering. Last one I'm going to show you is the sales tax report. Uh, remember, we set up our tax report for um, Ontario HST. So if I just show you here, we can see that I've got my total taxable amount and then the actual tax collected handy for when you're doing your income taxes. So those are those are pretty much the reports. Uh, pretty straightforward, nothing too earth shattering. Hopefully they help. I uh, just wanted to touch on them because obviously uh, they do come with Ubercard and they are helpful. So you should know about them. Lastly, we'll just head over to Drupal.org. Um, like I said, a couple things I wanted to show you here. So if we go to Project uh, Adaptive Theme, so adaptive theme, um, we've been using some of the, uh, or we've been using Bartik out of Drupal, Drupal Core. Um, you know, kind of ugly to be honest with you. You look at it, you know you're looking at a Drupal site, not necessarily something you always want to have. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and got adaptive theme. So what this is, is it's kind of a, a, a base theme that you can use uh, and make sub themes off of it. So a th sub theme that's been created uh, has been the AT Commerce theme. So you'd want to go ahead download this 7.x3.1 uh, version and you're going to upload that to your site slash sites all themes uh, just like we did uh, with our modules in uh, in our first video tutorial or second whatever it was um, you're going to get the adaptive theme and then you're going to get uh, et dash commerce and you're going to download this one as well so I've gone ahead and I've done that so we'll step over to our appearance and you'll see here I've got AT admin, AT commerce, AT core, sub theme, right? This all comes with 
um, the adaptive theme. So I'm going to enable and set as default the AT Commerce. Right. So now if I go back to my home page, I've just drastically changed the look and feel of my Uber card or, or my Drupal Uber card site simply by enabling this new theme. And so I can click into my product here and I can see that it's, you know, it's theming different things, got a different look and feel. But well, that's kind of the power of Drupal is you can go on to, uh, just like we got modules, you can go and you can take a look at these themes and you can check out some themes that you like and that have a different look and feel. You know, if I looked at uh, Marinelli here, this is the common, well, not a good image, but this is the look and feel that I can install just by enabling a module. Uh, and then I can start tweaking it and playing with it. So I just wanted to give you a flavor for that because this um, um, this AT Commerce theme uh, is specifically designed for Ubercart, and so it has a lot of powerful things that I'm not going to walk through here, but we'll be looking at it in Series 2. Um, so take a look at it. Um, maybe you want to play with it. The one cool thing that I like is its responsive theme. So you'll see my image here is shrinking. Right, and if I stretch it back out, obviously it's gotten back to the, the large size, right? So that's pretty cool. That's a mobile uh, friendly website that you have just by installing a new theme. Lastly, uh, I mentioned it before, but the power of Drupal is this entire community that's behind it that's kind of helping you out. So you can go here. Um, I went to download and extend. I can look at my module categories and you'll see that there's an actual e-commerce category. If I click into that, What's your first module right there? Ubercart, right? Super powerful. But then there are a lot of cool modules that you can check out here. So if I wanted to add on recurring payments and subscriptions, I can do that by grabbing that module, downloading it, uploading it to my site, enabling it. Um, and then more often than not, you're going to see that there's a read documentation and that's going to help you walk through enabling some of these things. So that's one good one. Uh, if we go to, you know, the second page, I think there's a variable prices on here, right? So we can create a variable price product. So essentially you see variable prices good for donation sites. Uh, you want a person to pay what they can, uh, enable this module and you're off to the races, right? Then we've also got, you know, FedEx shipping, right? So we use GPS, but if you have a FedEx account, you can download this module and install that, right? And then lastly, what we're gonna be checking out in the second um, video tutorial series, Ubercart SSL. Uh, Super awesome module, you enable that, and this will secure your pages. Obviously, huge caveat here, it doesn't work with the overlay uh, module, it's something we disabled. I'm not too fond of the overlay module, but if you are and you use it, uh, you're gonna have problems there. Um, but that's it, that's essentially the video tutorial uh, series. Uh, kind of walk through everything, I give you the recap on what this was all about, so hopefully this helps you, hopefully your site is launched and you're making a little bit of money, and we'll see you with video tutorial series number two, which should be coming up pretty quickly. Take care.